This is tutorial 22, and we will discuss how to use the Navier-Stokes equation. The Navier-Stokes equation is really important in fluid dynamics. It governs all the flow involving incompressible and Newtonian fluids. We can retrieve what we have learned in the previous chapters from the Navier-Stokes. For example, if the flow is in viscid, we can take the viscosity as zero, and this term here is in fact the acceleration. So, we can write the resulting equations in a compact form which is the governing equation you have learned in chapter 2. But the Navier-Stokes equation is a non-linear partial differential equation, so that it is really hard to solve analytically. People usually use computer simulation and numerical methods to obtain its solution. Note that it can also be expressed in cylindrical coordinates to simplify flows in pipes. In the final, there must be at least one question that requires you to simplify the Navier-Stokes equation for a laminar flow and to solve it. So let's see how we can do this. By laminar flow, we can assume that the flow is one-dimensional and steady for most problems in this course. You will learn more about that in the lectures about chapter 8. In problems in the exam, we are usually interested in a velocity profile, so we do not need to consider all the three components of the Navier-Stokes. Here below is the outline of applying the Navier-Stokes equation. You may make a print screen if you find it really useful. Now I quickly go through the procedure. First, we shall consider the flow direction. If the fluid just flow in one direction, we can cancel out many terms already. Then, we can observe the geometry of the flow. For pipes, the flow is usually SS symmetric, that is, all the quantities are independent of theta. For plates, we usually assume that the plate is infinite, so the velocity is independent of the side direction. Also, gravity cannot act on all the three directions, so you may cancel out some of the body force term. Next, most problems are steady in this course, so that you can cancel out the local acceleration term too. And, most importantly, you have to apply the continuity equation in order to continue the simplification. We shall see how to do this in the next examples. After that, if you still have many terms remaining in your equation, then you shall look at the question again. Usually, there are some extra hints for you to take away some of the terms. If you have done the above appropriately, then you usually obtain a second order ODE that can be solved by direct integration. But to get the integration constants, you still have to apply the boundary condition. In chapter 1, I've already mentioned about the no slip condition, that is, the fluid always stick to the contact surface and have no velocity. You see that this condition will be applied for every single problem. Then, you shall manipulate any free surface. The shear stress at the free surface is zero. Also, the pressure is independent of the two directions parallel to the free surface. Finally, especially for cylindrical coordinates, you may get really strange solution as your solution. Say the natural law appears in your solution. But remember that the velocity everywhere should be finite and continuous. And these conditions may also help us to determine some of the integration constants. Then after solving and applying the boundary condition, you can eventually find an expression with all the integration constants solved. So, Let's look at Professor Lee's lecture notes and circle what I have mentioned in the previous slide. Here is the continuity equation, and here is the no slip condition. And for the next example, we have a free surface. We see that due to the free surface, P is independent of Y and Z. Also, since we have a free surface, the shear stress at the free surface shall be zero. Again, as in the previous problem, the continuity equation and the no slip condition are applied. The same thing happens in the cylindrical coordinates. So here is the continuity equation in cylindrical coordinates, and here is the no slip condition. Also, this example used the fact that the velocity at the center line is finite. So there is no natural law in the velocity distribution. We are going to use these results of pipe flow in the chapter 8 to account for the major losses. So, it is our turn to use the Navier-Stokes equation. Even though the problem is unsteady, since a pressure gradient is suddenly applied to a fluid. But anyway, the procedure for simplifying the Navier-Stokes equation is still the same. Also, this problem does not require you to solve for the velocity distribution. A big reason is that this course is not a partial differential equation course. So, let's start working. 
First, we use this coordinate system, and clearly the flow direction is just the x direction. There is no velocity in the y and z direction, so these terms are all zero. Also, the pipe is infinite, so that the velocity shall not vary in the side direction, that is the z direction. So this term goes out, and then gravity acts on the y axis. So x, y are the horizontal directions, and there shall not be any gravity. Next, we apply the continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates. It is given by, and then there is no flow in the y and z direction. We get the requirement that u does not vary with x. So this term. It cancels out. So we conclude our simplified Navier Stokes equation is Then we try to find the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions here are the no slip conditions. So the fluid particles at these two surfaces will stick to the plate. And we write this observation down. And this is true for all instants of time. And since this is a partial differential equation, we also have to include the initial condition. From the question, the fluid are initially at rest. So, as a remark, the pressure does not depend on the set direction. P is only a function of x and y. Also, the max derivative of the pressure with respect to x and y is zero. Since as we look at this equation, and this is zero since gravity is uniform. So we get pressure as a superposition of a function in x and a function in y. And this term is in fact linear since it is mentioned in the question that the pressure gradient applied is uniform. That is, also, if we look at this equation again, so this term is zero, and we get so that we can conclude that the pressure is indeed. If a flow involves two fluids, then the velocity of the particles at the interface must be continuous. So, our next example illustrates how to use this information to solve a problem. This problem only asks for the velocity at the interface. It is a wise choice to start from the navier stokes equation along the flow direction, that is, the x direction. If we are lucky enough, we don't need to look at another component of navier stokes So, let's start working. First, the flow is laminar, so there is no velocity component in the y and z direction, and all these terms cancel out. Also, we have an infinite plate. The velocity shall not depend on the side direction. And then, x is a horizontal direction, so this term is also zero. And then, the flow is of course steady, and there is no local acceleration. Then we apply the continuity equation, and there is no velocity in this two directions, so these two terms are zero. Finally, as given in the problem, there is no pressure gradient in the x direction, so this also go away. So, this is our differential equation, and it says the second derivative is always zero. So the velocity is a linear function. Also, it is clear to us that the velocity distribution in this fluid and this fluid are different. So we shall let two linear velocity profile for this flow. We use the subscript 2 to denote that this belongs to this fluid. And then similarly, and then we shall apply the boundary condition. So let's say this velocity is u2 and this is u1. And then we apply the boundary condition. As y equals 0, that belongs to the velocity profile of this fluid. So that is u two zero. So one constant is already gone. Also, we have another no slip condition at y equals two h. That's here, and that is the velocity profile one.
we can also write this equation as So we need two more conditions to determine all the constants. Then we shall apply the continuity condition for shearing stress and velocity as the interface. Here we again use the subscript to denote the corresponding fluid. But as you recall the definition of shearing stress, here this term is zero. So we have another requirement that, and we can rewrite this as. And we label this as equation 2. Also, in addition to the shearing stress, the velocities shall also be continuous. So, by what we have left in the previous slide, and we have shown that this is 0. So, if we plug in the relation 2 in this equation, So we bring the A1 to the right-hand side. And we substitute the B1. And we factor out A1. So that we can solve for A1. And by this equation, and we also have the B1. Since we have determined all the constants here, we also find the velocity as the interface. And we have solved this problem. Our final example is about flow in annular pipe. Our goal is to show that this expression is the velocity profile in the set direction. Of course, we are working in the cylindrical coordinates. As usual, we shall start from the Navier Stokes equation along the flow direction, that is, the set axis. Since the flow is laminar, there is no velocity component in the R and theta directions. Also, the flow is axis symmetric, so the velocity shall not depend on theta. And the pipe is horizontal, so there is no gravity. And the flow is steady, so there is no local acceleration. Then we look at our continuity equation. There is no velocity in these two components, so what's left is this equals zero, so that we can cancel these two terms. So, what's left as our differential equation is, But what is this guy? Will it become something else after the integration with respect to R? The answer is no. To give this answer, we have to look at the R component of Navier stocks. Since the radial velocity component is zero, these all are gone. So from this equation, we see that, which is just a constant, and we further differentiate this guy by Z. This becomes zero. So we have, and this guy shall not be a function of R. So we can rewrite our differential equation as, and we are going to solve this equation in the next page. Before solving this equation in the next page, let's determine the boundary condition first. As R equals the inner radius, the fluid stack to the inner cylinder. So we have a boundary condition. Also, at this point, which is this point, the fluid also stack to the outer cylinder. So we also have, then we are ready to solve this differential equation in the next page. By integration, 
and there is an integration constant here, and there is a missing bracket, and we divide this whole thing by R. And since I do not want to solve for any constant anymore, we do a definite integral. And we expand this thing out. And the left hand side is since we have this boundary condition, then we can determine the C by using another boundary condition. And this is zero. So we can solve for C. which is a really ugly constant, then we can plug this into here. So what we get is which is slightly different from the solution here. But this guy indeed equals this guy. I won't solve these two problems here since they may appear in your homework. But I may give you some hints about problem 105, which is also on the final last year. To do this problem, you have to recall what we learned about stress in the viscous flow. Now there is no velocity component in the R direction. And if this becomes zero, this provides an extra boundary condition. So, we covered how to use the Navier Stokes equation to solve problems with these procedures. We also went through three examples as illustration. So, really get some practice for this topic and see you in the next video. Put any problem and feedback in the comments below. Thanks.